Did you know that in some low and middle income countries, more than a quarter of people are living with obesity? This is a problem because obesity can lead to many deadly diseases. These diseases are what we call non-communicable diseases or NCDs. As their name suggests, they are not infectious, meaning you can't catch them from another person or an animal, yet they have reached pandemic proportions. So you might wonder, what is the true extent of this huge epidemic? And are all regions of the world affected the same? Well, let's find out. I'm Laura Dugas, AXA Chair in Non-Communicable Disease Epidemiology from Loyola University, Chicago, and hosted at the University of Cape Town. In this first part of my master class, we're going to explore the scale of NCDs focusing on low-income populations. I'll share my experience of over 15 years as an epidemiologist studying populations in Africa, the Caribbean, and elsewhere. I'm sure you can recall images on television in the 2000s of obesity being the new disease disproportionately rising in countries like the US and in the UK, and in other words, in high-income countries. Sadly, this is no longer only a high-income country problem. Prevalence rates are soaring in every single low- and middle-income country, with 70% of overweight or obese people now living in these countries. Let me give you a little bit of perspective. My research has documented that in the last 10 years, whilst the rate of obesity has remained virtually the same in the US, it has unbelievably increased much faster in countries like Ghana and South Africa. This is not how we typically think of these countries where food security is a day-to-day -day challenge. What's alarming is that this disproportionate increase in obesity is now driving a type 2 diabetes epidemic. The International Diabetes Federation predicts that in Sub-Saharan Africa, the proportion of people living with type 2 diabetes will increase by 129% by 2045. It's shocking. This data may come as a surprise to you, but there's actually a model that can explain this phenomenon. It's called the epidemiologic transition model. It shows how where and how you live affects your health. Let me explain. The epidemiologic transition model suggests that as countries develop economically, they shift from the age of pestilence and famine to the age of degenerative and man-made diseases, or what we commonly call NCDs. Put differently, people living in a low-income country would likely die young from an infectious disease. But as their country economically transitions, the leading causes of death shifted to NCDs. But you see, the problem is that these countries are in fact facing a double burden of disease. We're seeing a dramatic increase in NCDs while infectious diseases persist. Let me give you some examples. Countries like South Africa will have an obesity prevalence among working age adults of 46% by 2035. And at the same time, around 18% of working age adults have HIV. And in Ghana, where there were 5.3 million malaria infection cases in 2022, now also faces a high burden of both obesity and type 2 diabetes. My research has shown that in Ghana, the prevalence of type 2 diabetes over the past 10 years has increased by almost 150%. Countries that are transitioning from middle to high income, like Seychelles, are not spared. Over the past 10 years in my studies, the increase in type 2 diabetes is 200%. The same scenario is happening all around the world, from Sub-Saharan Africa to South and Central America and Oceania. For example, according to the 2023 World Obesity Atlas, Mexico will have an obesity prevalence of 47% by 2035. For Tonga, this is as high as 67%. The impact of obesity on the national GDP for these countries is estimated to be an alarming 3% for Mexico and 4% for Tonga. As you can imagine, healthcare systems in most of these countries are already strapped and only able to mostly offer primary care. They simply lack the resources to provide NCD prevention, like blood pressure or blood glucose screening. That's why low- and middle-income countries are more impacted than others. 
In fact, more than 80% of NCD-related deaths under the age of 70 take place in low- and middle-income countries. To wrap things up, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and other NCDs are not just limited to high-income countries like the US. They have now spread to low- and middle-income countries that were traditionally defined by a high burden of infectious disease. Using the epidemiologic transition model, we can now see that these countries now contend with both an escalating NCD risk and persistent infectious diseases impacting an already overburdened healthcare system. NCDs are now reaching pandemic proportions all over the world. Yet, low- and middle-income countries are the ones shouldering the burden with over 80% of total premature NCD-related deaths. So, now that you understand the extent of the problem, you must wonder what the causes are and why low-income countries may be more vulnerable. Well, join me in the second part of my masterclass to find out.